the darkness. It flows within me. It seeps from every vein. Right, what's happening, plebs? We've got a first place deck profile from an Australian regional. Um, didn't really get a chance to ask uh, Bodan too much about his deck choice and uh, turnout and location and all that stuff because time zones are a thing. Uh, but anyway, I'll try explain this as best I can because this is definitely one of the most unique Burning Abyss builds I've seen this whole format. So uh, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of stuff to go through here. Um, I'll try explain what I think he was trying to go with certain choices and stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, basically he's playing a very, very heavy BA engine. So he's playing multiples of cards you wouldn't really expect multiples of, like Cow Cab, uh, like Alec, like Lil Bitch, uh, even Barbar at 2 is perhaps a little bit strange. And he's even playing 2 Drag Egg. Um, those of you guys who don't know what Drag Egg does, because it's like literally never been played. Um, it's basically when it goes to the graveyard, you can stack a Burning Abyss card. So even things like Fire Lake and stuff can be stacked with this guy. Obviously he's not playing it, but yeah, he can stack Burning Abyss cards. Um, that's I'm gonna assume like the design behind his deck and the idea was that you could just spit out like Beatrice, like just just vomit of Beatrice onto the field as much as you can. Like that seems to be what his idea here is. Like he's playing so many Burning Abyss monsters that he's probably just playing these names to just special, 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 make like double Beatrice turn one, uh, get your Skarm Search in the end phase, uh, and then Beatrice can send Kaiju Slumber to the graveyard. Uh, so that's probably why he's only playing one and four Kaijus. So just to go over quickly, the four Kaijus he's playing is uh, uh, Jizu Kiru, um, Dogaran, and two Gamma Seal, two Blastoise. Um, the effects are irrelevant, they don't really do anything unless you're playing against Kaijus, uh, which you shouldn't be if you're not at table 500. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of designed to just go for Beatrice Turbo, I assume. Uh, he's playing a lot of hand traps, so maybe he's trying to go second with this deck? Uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I feel like with the Kaijus in the main deck, going second could actually be pretty decent uh, with five, uh, five hand traps. Again, I'm not really too sure um, what his idea is behind this deck, but with everyone going first, I would assume that maybe he actually did design this to blind second because everyone's trying to go first and obviously he can't win every dice roll. Uh, there's no traps at all, so again, that kind of facilitates the idea that he was probably maybe trying to go second with this deck. Um, yeah, I think that really does it for the main deck. I don't think there's anything too much I've uh, missed out on or explained. Like, play the Rhinos, you normal summon this, special summon a ton of Burning Abyss monsters, make Beatrice. Like, this is literally, this is Beatrice the deck. Like, if, if ever Burning Abyss was Dante the deck, it's now now the deck's changed. Now it's Beatrice the deck. So this is, this is it. Um, and it's interesting because, like, with regards to the ban list, this has been untouched. I cannot see a single card here that has been affected by the ban list in any shape or form. Which is quite funny because I guess this deck can pretty much be taken forward card for card into the next format. Um, and yeah, so um, the Kaijus as well, obviously forgot to mention. Um, I did say that you can send this to the graveyard with Beatrice. Um, and then you can, what it does basically, for those of you who don't know, you can banish it from the graveyard and search out any Kaiju. So basically it gives you a searchable out to um, that shit deck, uh, Cosmo. So you can just tribute over Dark Destroyer, uh, put this thing in defense, I think. Can you special this in attack or defense? Uh, this has to be special in attack, okay. Whatever. Uh, and then you have like the double Utopia in the main deck just because you can spam out lots of XE monsters and go into Utopia uh, and you need to in case one of them gets Cosmojo the way or striked on summon. Uh, another interesting thing, moving on to the side deck, of course, uh, we have two Fog Kings, so he's not playing any back row uh, at all. So two Falking because I guess Monarchs would probably expect everyone to put Restrict against them. So for Mon as a Monarch player, your Twin Twisters are probably staple going into game two and three um, and to deal with those Restricts. So I guess flip that on its head. Uh, you play no back row apart from Twin Twister, which you're probably not even going to set anyway against Monarchs because you need to hold it in case uh, in case you need to out that domain. So you normal summon this uh, over a Dante or something. You just special summon literally like any combination of Burning Abyss monsters, and you can normal summon this afterwards. Uh, as long as bigger, as long as Fog King's bigger than a thousand attack, then you're probably safe. Like you've just beaten Monarchs auto win. Uh, two Ghost Ogres again. Here we see more hand traps, probably for going against Pepe. Um, Draco Pals, obviously they're not dead yet with this, because uh, this obviously wasn't post ban list. Uh, I think, I don't see if he would, I don't think he would take out any of the Valors. I think Valor is good against Draco Pals going first, but it might, might be there for Draco Pals as a straight swap, I'm not sure. Uh, free Flying C for the Mirror match. Now, I'm personally a big fan of Ixie Universe, uh, but um, Flying C is a lot more, is, is a bigger blowout. 
uh, because you essentially just let them not play. Uh, and he's also going for Econs as well. So that means he's probably going to anticipate that people are going to have Flying C against him. So he can tribute away his own Flying C, take his opponent's Beatrice, and then put Gaia Charger over it, which you can see here in the extra deck if you've missed that out. Uh, so you can Econ away like a Flying C potentially in the mirror match, take their Beatrice, and then put Gaia over it. Um, and it's also, um, I'm a little bit... Uh, I personally would have included like Downward Magician as well because you can take their opponent's Dante's uh, and go into go into e uh, sorry take their opponent's Dante's with Econs, uh, put Downward over it, um, which is you know another way to like deal with the opponent's monsters. But I guess like dealing with Beatrice is more important, which is why he's playing the Gaia Charger here. Uh, Typhoon as well is another uh, good going second uh, hand trap. Just the hand trap central yo uh, for a Draco Power deck, and of course three system down and broken like nuts cards the the nuts versus uh versus cosmo so yeah um i hope i've done this deck profile justice uh like i said i didn't get a chance to speak to him in detail about his own personal choices but like i hope i've explained in, in detail enough what i think he was going for with this with this deck um so yeah basically we have beatrice turbo boys um comment like subscribe with uh, your opinions and stuff uh try this deck out it's probably going to be fine next format as well like card for card you could probably play this like monarchs and uh cosmos are going to be the best deck probably change up the uh maxis for something else and you're probably good to go with this for next format so thanks for watching guys as always uh, comment like subscribe and i'll see you next time now that you've heard our whispers it is only a matter of time